Welcome to tutorial 6. Some important operational variables in a wastewater treatment plant are site-specific and difficult to generalize. These variables include sludge residence time, SRT, and food to microorganism, F to M ratio. In addition, other calculations such as daily averages, moving averages, and mass flows are applied to most water quality parameters throughout the plant. In this tutorial, we will cover how to define operational variables like SRT and mathematical operations like averaging and flux calculations. To do this, first we will need to develop a new layout. We will need an influent object, a control splitter, a two-flow combiner, a plug flow tank, and a rectangular secondary clarifier. Connect the influent object to the control splitter and then connect the top of the control splitter to the flow combiner. The control splitter is going to be used to simulate a bypass in this layout. Just like in the previous tutorials, make the connections between the plug flow tank and the clarifier and attach the clarifier effluent to the flow combiner. Next, let's add the appropriate labels. Let's turn on the stream labels and make sure our plant is labeled correctly. We'll call the influent object raw influent and its stream raw. We'll call the overflow stream bypass and the pump flow stream INF. Set the plug flow tank's label to aeration the overflow stream to MLSS, the pump label to PMP, and the recycled stream RAS. We'll call the clarifier final clarifier, the overflow stream SE, and the pump flow stream WAS. Finally, we'll call the final effluent stream of our layout final EFF. Now that we have everything connected and labeled, let's set up the clarifier's operational parameters. First we are going to want to change the recycle fraction to 80% of the influent flow rate. To do this, right click on the final clarifier and select operational from the input parameters menu. Switch proportional recycle on. We are going to want to make the recycle flow proportional to the influent flow. So change the stream label to which the recycle is proportional to the name of our influent stream, in our case, INF. The default recycle fraction is 0.8, so we don't need to change it. Now that we have our proportional recycle set up, let's change the pump flow from 40 meters cube per day to 100 meters cube per day and accept the changes we made to the clarifier. With the layout set up, save the layout as tutorial 6. Defining mass flow. Now we are going to cover how to specify mass flow for the effluent solids using the define feature. This mass flow is defined as the effluent suspended solids multiplied by the effluent flow rate. Click the define button on the toolbar to display the defined drop down menu. Select mass flow from the list. When you do, a define mode window will pop up and the status bar at the bottom of GPS Act will change from mode edit to mode define mass flow. In the stream choices section, check the box beside the bypass under control splitter, SE under final clarifier, and final EFF under two flow combiner. In the variable choices section, check the box beside the TSS variable under solids. Click accept to save the changes and exit the define mode. The status bar should return to mode edit. Save the model and build the model by clicking the simulation button. Once the model is built, we need to create an output graph of the three mass flows. Right click on the clarifier's SE stream and select Output Variables, Defined Variables, Mass Flow. Drag the mass flow total suspended solids for the SE stream. Do the same for the bypass and the final effluent stream. Right click on the bypass stream and select Output Variables, Defined Variables, Mass Flow. Drag the mass flow total suspended solids for the bypass stream.
Right-click on the final effluent stream and select Output Variable, Defined Variables, Mass Flow. Drag the mass flow total suspended solids for the final EFS stream. Resize the graph. Set the minimum and maximum mass flows on the graph to 0 and 1000 kg per day. Now that we have the output graph set up, just like in tutorial 1, place the influent flow rate in the input control window. Set the range of the control from 0 to 10,000 meters cubed per day. Now, run a 20-day dynamic simulation. I'm going to also add a small delay to the simulation run so that we can see the changes of the output. Try varying the influent flow during the run. Notice that when the influent flow rate is about 2000 meters cubed per day, which is the pump flow rate for the control splitter object, some flow will begin to bypass the plant, showing up in the bypass stream. Adjust these values and try to reduce the total mass flow of the solids discharge into the receiving water. Defining an SRT. Next, we are going to cover how to calculate and display SRT, the solids retention time in the system. To do this, we will need to return to the modeling layout. Once again, click the Define button and select Solids Retention Time from the menu. The SRT Manager window should be displayed and the status bar should now read that we are in Define Solids Retention Time mode. This is the mode we need to be in to define the SRT equation. Click on the plus button below the left hand window in the SRT Manager menu. Enter a name of the SRT calculation, in this case, SRT Tank, and click OK. A new blank equation will be shown in the right hand window. To begin defining the SRT equation, click the aeration tank and select all reactors within the plug flow tank to be added in the SRT equation. There are two parts to the equation. The numerator is the mass portion of the equation and includes things like the mass of solids held in each tank. Typically, SRT calculations are only concerned with the mass of solids held in the aeration basin. But it is also possible to calculate the SRT using the sum of mass held both in the aeration basin and the final clarifier. To remove terms in the equation, simply click on the associated object on the drawing board. The denominator of the equation is made up of the excess solid mass flow lines used to calculate SRT. Defining the denominator is done by simply clicking on the flow lines which convey solids out of the system. Typically, this will only include the waste flow line, VAS, but for this tutorial, we will also include the solids flux in the clarifier effluent stream, SE. This will be the SRT equation we will use for this tutorial. The SRT manager also provides an option to create a process controller for SRT. This option can be accessed by clicking on the estimate VAS using set SRT checkbox. A desired SRT and the desired waste stage flow can be selected. Make sure that this option is unchecked and close the SRT Manager window to accept the equation. Now that we have defined the SRT equation, save the model and click the simulation button and rebuild the simulation code. Once the model code is generated, we need to set up SRT as an output parameter. To do this, click on the Define button and select Solids Retention Time to bring up the SRT Manager window. Drag the SRT variable from the window to a new output graph. Resize the graph. Go to the Output Graph Properties menu to set an appropriate title and a reasonable scale, say around 30 days retention time. Lastly, place the wastage flow rate on the Input Control tab. The wastage flow rate can be found by right-clicking on the final clarifier and selecting Operational from the Input Parameters menu. Try running a few simulations varying our input controls and observe the changes in the SRT.
When you are finished running simulations, click the modeling button. Defining averages. For the last part of this tutorial, we are going to define some averages. The procedure for defining averages is very similar to the procedure used when setting up the SRT equation. For this tutorial, we are going to apply two averaging calculations to the mass flow in the discharge stream. Click the Define button and select Daily Average to display the Daily Average window. Select Define Variables in the Variable Type drop-down menu and tag the mass flow total suspended solids variable under Final EFF Mass Flow. Accept the form and you have now set up a daily average calculation for the mass flow of suspended solids for the final effluent stream. We are going to use the same procedure to set up moving averages. To do this, click on the Define button and select Moving Averages to display a moving average window. Select Define Variables in the Variable Type drop-down menu. Tag the mass flow total suspended solids variable under Final EFF Mass Flow and accept the form. Save the layout and rebuild the model. Once the model is built, create a new output graph of the averages. To do this, right click on the final excellence stream and select Output Variable, Define Variable, Moving Average. Note that a number will appear to the right of the variable name in the display menu. This number represents the number of days that are used in each average calculation. You must be in modeling mode to edit this number of days value. Drag the moving average and create a new graph. We are going to do the same for daily average and mass flow. Right click on the final effluent stream and select Output Variables, Defined Variables, Daily Average. Drag the daily average and create a graph. Similarly, right click on the final effluent stream and select Output Variables, Defined Variables, Mass Flow. Drag the Mass Flow variable and create a graph. Arrange the graphs and set the title and scale. Use the maximum limit of 1000 kg per day for all variables. Run the model and vary the wastage and influence flow rate. Compare the values of mass flow with the daily and moving average. And that's it! We have successfully implemented daily and moving averages. Thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in information on our other software products such as Cap Networks for preliminary design and costing, TalkScam for industrial wastewater treatment modeling, or WattPro for drinking water treatment modeling, you can visit our website at www.hydromantis.com for further information.